Have you ever looked at a really big, complicated problem and just thought, where in the world do I even start? Well, today, we're going to break down this super powerful framework that turns that exact feeling into a step-by-step -step process for creating something new. So let's just dive right in. We're going to follow the journey of one student as they decide to take on a massive global issue right from inside their own school. So here's the game plan. We'll kick things off with the big challenge, then walk through the four main steps of the design cycle. That's inquire, develop, create, and evaluate. And then at the end, we're going to uncover what the real final product of this whole thing actually is. Trust me, it might not be what you think. You know, every great design kicks off with a problem. And in this case, it's a problem we literally see every single day plastic waste. It's this huge global thing that feels completely overwhelming, something even governments and giant corporations are struggling with. And that leads us to the big question, right? How on earth can one student with, you know, not a lot of resources actually make a dent in a problem that massive? It sounds pretty much impossible, but with the right framework, you can start to make the impossible feel a lot more manageable. So the answer is something called the MYP design cycle. The best way to think about it is like a roadmap for solving problems. It's not just about building stuff. It's a really structured way of thinking that guides you all the way from a fuzzy idea to a real tested solution. Let's see how it actually plays out. All right, step one. This part is all about asking questions, not jumping to solutions. In this first phase, which is called criterion A, the only goal is to investigate. You've got to really understand the problem, who you're solving it for, and what solutions are already out there before you even think about picking up a pencil to sketch an idea. Our students started by zeroing in on their local version of that huge global problem. They noticed two things at school, not enough good places to work and a whole lot of plastic trash. So they brilliantly connected them. The goal, to build an eco table. The client is the whole school, sure, but the target audience is super specific their fellow students who really need more desk space. Now, this is so important. The student didn't just invent something out of thin air. They did their homework. They actually analyzed existing plastic tables, looking at everything from cost to materials to their big weaknesses. This helped them find a real gap. They saw that other tables were too expensive or flimsy or had sharp edges. All of these were clear opportunities for their design to be better. And check this out, a key piece of their own research. The student just asked their classmates a simple question and found that almost three quarters of them had plastic bottles at home that could be used. This was a huge green light. It proved that the main raw material for the project wasn't just available, it was everywhere, right there in their own community. Okay, so with all that solid research in their back pocket, the student could finally move into the fun, creative phase, developing ideas. This is criterion B where all that investigation gets turned into actual concrete designs for a solution. But before they started drawing, they made a design specification. This is basically their rule book for success. And look how specific these are. A hard budget, the exact materials, and really clear, measurable rules for how it should work and be safe. This list is going to be their guide for every single decision from here on out. Then the brainstorming began. The students sketched out a bunch of different ideas, playing with different shapes and ways to build it. But, and this is key, they didn't just pick their own favorite. Nope, they took the best designs back to the people who would actually use the table, their classmates, and had them vote. The data made it obvious. Design one was the clear winner. And that brings us to the part everybody gets excited about, the build phase, or criterion C. This is where all the plans and the research and the drawings finally become a real, physical thing. It's time to get hands-on. A good build always starts with a good plan. The student laid out a really clear, logical process. First, get the materials. Then, make the eco bricks by stuffing the bottles with plastic waste. Then, assemble the base, get the top ready, and finally, put it all together. It's like a recipe that keeps things efficient and helps you avoid mistakes. But this is where real-world problem-solving really shines. Because, let's be honest, no plan is ever perfect. The student had to adapt on the fly. They ended up making the base taller to fit the bottles they could find, and they thinned the tabletop to make it lighter. The big takeaway here isn't just the changes themselves, but that every single change was a smart, justified decision made to improve the final product. And at last, we've hit the final step in the cycle, evaluation, or criterion D. The solution is built, but is it any good? Does it actually fix the problem you set out to solve in the first place? This is the moment of truth, the reality check. 
To get the answer, the student put together a really thorough testing plan. They didn't just ask people, so, do you like it? They watched how people used it. They physically tested its strength. They gathered survey data from their target audience, and they even brought in an expert, a professional carpenter, to get a pro's opinion. And that expert feedback? It's pure gold. The carpenter loved the size and simplicity, but also gave a really clear, helpful suggestion for how to make it better. Use more colorful paper inside the bottles to make the base pop. This is exactly what evaluation is for, finding out what you nailed and what you can improve for next time. So, the student built a table. Story's over, right? Well, not even close. Because the physical object, the eco-table itself, wasn't actually the most important thing that got created in this project. See, on the left, you have the product you can touch, a table made from 32 kilograms of reused plastic waste. But over on the right, that's the real product. The table was just the project. The true outcome was the development of a whole new set of skills, creative thinking, systematic problem solving, knowing how to find and use information, being resilient when things went wrong, and communication. Those are the tools that will last a lifetime. And this is what brings it all back to the big picture. This whole process ties directly into the mission of the International Baccalaureate. It's not just about memorizing facts. It's about developing young people who are curious, who are knowledgeable, and who care. People who have the mindset and the tools to actually go out and make the world a better place. Ultimately, what the design cycle really teaches us is that design isn't just a class you take. It's a mindset. It's a way of thinking that you can use to take on any challenge, big or small. So the final question really isn't about what this student built. It's about you. What problem out there in your world is just waiting for you to solve it?